If you think a lie, ask your children. Most of the kids will tell because you're the one you have the authority. Because all you're after is your own way. Hello? It is because I don't like you to do it this way. You don't give a second thought, is there a better way to do it? The fact is, I don't like it this way. And I, it makes me a kick up rumpus. Because I'm satisfying my... Yeah. The issue with relationships in marriage. It's all about... Come on, talk with me. It's all about... It's all about... It's all about... So therefore, God can't entrust you with authority. He's got to kill the me. He's got to get rid of the me. So he who has power without God, the character will abuse. This is why Jesus gave the great commandment before he gave the great commission. Hallelujah. He gave the great commandment before he gave the great commission. What is the great commandment? In John 13, 34, what did Jesus say? A new commandment I give unto you that you love one another. First base. That's the new commandment. He says, that's what I want to drill in you because I've come to establish the kingdom and the kingdom of God is about love because God is love. The heart of God is a heart of love. And so therefore God wants our hearts to be filled with love. He wants love to dominate. He wants love to control. He wants love to be the reason. Love must be that which determines what you do, why you do it, when you do it, how you do it. Everything must be governed by the principle of love. You want authority. You want to run the company. You want to be in charge. You want to be the supervisor. Why? Ask yourself why. What is my motive? But I can earn more money. God will not put you in that place because you're going to abuse it. And that's why you very often that a man becomes supervisor and he becomes manager and he begins to oppress the people. Are you still there? Because now all I'm concerned about is money. And I'm going to turn this company around. But what is he talking about? Economics. More money for the company. More money for me. Doesn't matter what happens to the people. Doesn't matter how many people we displace. And how many we throw out. Because the issue is about me. They will say that I turned this company around. I don't care how I did it. That's not important. Is there that I made it to make money? That's never the way of the kingdom of God. The heart of love. So God gave the great commandment. And then he gave the commission. And then the commission, he said, Go ye into what? All the world and preach this gospel. Make disciples of all men. But in order to do that, he first had to give us his commandment. It is based. Because you've got to see that it is based upon love. So when we talk about a spirit-controlled life, just give me another couple minutes on this. Let me bring it to a point where I can stick the pin and we pick it up. A spirit-controlled life is one where flesh is brought under control, you see? So that the flesh is relegated, meaning the self-life, where we relegate the self-life. And if you relegate the self-life, then that which will rise is others. Because self is no longer dominant. Self is no longer leading. So that our focus for living now will become other-centered rather than self-centered. And self-other-centered living is living by the principle of what? Love, because love seeks the best interests of others. others. That's it. Love is about others. So it's an other-centered life. So Christianity is about love. That's what Christianity is about. Love. 
That's what it is. And so for the believer, loving is not an option, it's not an obligation. It's not an option. Sorry, love is not an option, it's an obligation. The believer is obligated to love. The believer is called to love. And so fasting is at its heart trying to bring that quality into our lives so that we can love. Let me close and pick up this next time. But watch this. Watch this. Turn to the Isaiah 58 for a moment. And I want you to just see this before we leave it. It's all about love. So Paul says in Romans, while you're turning to it, owe no man anything but what? Love. But a debt of love. So you owe every man. So tell the person beside you, pay me. Yeah. Come on, tell somebody on the other side, pay me. Yeah. Because what do you owe them? Love. You owe, owe no man anything but a debt of love. You are indebted to love me. You have no choice. You have to love me. You owe me that. That's the Christian. You owe me that. Lord of mercy, you owe me. I think last week in our time with the core leaders, we were making this statement. Listen to it. I love it down to my gizzard. How do you know that a football player is a footballer? Talk, talk with me. Because he plays football. How do you know that a chef is a chef? Oh. Huh? Because he cooks. How do you know that a mechanic is a mechanic? Because he fixes cars. How do you know that a carpenter is a carpenter? How do you know a Christian? Because listen to Jesus. By football playing, you know he's a footballer. By cooking, he is a chef. By fixing cars, he is a mechanic. Jesus says, by this shall all men know that you are my disciples. If you have, so the Christian is known by his. So if there is no love, I never said to know. So thou condemnest. So the question is, dost thou lovest? And if thou sayest that thou lovest, where is the evidence to support thy love? The hallmark of the Christian is the one who loves. So that everything the Christian does is one reason should make you do it. What is behind your actions? When you act during the course of a day, how you treat people, why you do what you do always, why did I just do that? Are you still there? What made me react that way? Anything that is not of love is not of God. We just missed it. Tell your neighbor you need a reorientation. Got to get back to the principle, beloved. Look at this in, uh, in Isaiah 58. Now you just see that that's what fasting, the first pace of fasting, that's what God wants to see happening in our lives. Because the control will come out at the end. But it must be based first. He's want to get the heart of love because it's only the heart of love can be trusted with power and authority. Verse 6. Is not this the kind of fast that I have chosen? To loose the chains of injustice, untie the cords of the yoke, to set the oppressed free, and break every yoke? It's all talking about people. We already saw earlier in the teaching that every one of those things is about the issue of control. But equally, they are about the issue of control, but they are equally about what? love about people getting them free 
breaking the yoke of bondage from off of them, undoing the cause of injustice. It's all other centered. It is all making sure that the needs of the people are met and ensure that liberty comes. But watch this. Hey, verse 7. Hey! Verse 7. Hey! Is it not to share your food with the hungry? To provide the poor wanderer with shelter? When you see the naked, that you clothe him? And to not turn away from your own flesh, because thou shalt love the Lord thy God, and the second is like unto it, thou shalt love thy neighbor how? So the issue is love of, uh, love of God, love of neighbor, love of self. Three-pronged issue of life. It's all about love. Come on, let me hear somebody say with me, it's all about love. <laughs> Tell somebody else it's all about love. <laughs> Once more, it's all about love. <laughs> love of God. Come with me, love of God. <laughs> love of neighbor. <laughs> love of self. <laughs> Once again, love of God. <laughs> love of neighbor. <laughs> love of self. <laughs> because if you don't love yourself, it's going to be difficult to love your neighbor. But you must love your neighbor as you love yourself. Do unto others. And therefore become other centered. So notice. Let's just finish that. So when you see the naked, you clothe him and that you do not turn away from your own flesh. Notice the last part of verse 9. Then you will call as fasting and outworking, the power of it. The Lord will answer. You will cry for help. But you notice you've got to be demonstrating the love. God will come and answer when love is flowing out of you. Because it's your internal disposition. Watch it. Watch the, the end of verse 9. If you do away with the yoke of oppression, with the pointing of the finger, and the malicious talk, if you spend yourself in behalf of the hungry, my God, if you spend yourself, how much of us concern about the hungry in this country? I wonder if you see the statistics recently, how much poor people they're about. Only if you understand how many people are dying of hunger. I was driving through Greenwich Farm two days ago. Oh, I think my wife was with me. And coming up, and man, the thing just hit me. The, everybody was begging. Every traffic light, old people, young people, children. I said to myself, my goodness, we're becoming a nation of And some of us wind up the window and run from them and drive them. But you better face it. Why you think he's out there? You think, if you think you're bad, you go out there? Come on, talk with me. Would you go there? Why you won't go there? So you think that they are there because they love it? Need need drive them but he says if you spend yourself in behalf of the hungry watch this and satisfy the needs of the oppressed it's all about love so understand that the goal of fasting to create control is so that when you are in control, when you have the power, 
it enables you to love. 